Shout out Sniper T on the beat. Tamara to the break of dawn is on the rise with life on the forefront of the mind. So line for line, you can ride this brain train and you can change your station without even touching the dial. So relax, stay a little bit, but listen for a while. And whether you're bumping this in the whip or in a business fit, it's a meeting you won't want to miss. A meeting for a meal to feed the soul with words for the mind. So sit back, enjoy the ride. Time to take off, it's time to fly. Cause Tamara to the break of dawn is on the rise. Hey, 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 y'all. It's me, Tamara. Tamara. Clappity clap, clap clap yeah so thank you so much for tuning in welcome to the show to all of my new listeners first of all y'all don't even realize that typically i used to have a studio audience that did all the clapping for me um they are on a unknown (laughs) amount of time hiatus um but they will be back um yeah and i usually talk about my life my interests and the ways i'm trying to grow so come on back through me. You feel me? Mm. I'll be messing up on my words sometimes too. And I don't edit it out because you're going to just write my train of thought. And to all my day one, two, 96, 145, 200, right? Because we are getting up there in the weeks, y'all. But whatever week you came in and you decided to keep on coming back through Thank you so much. Yes, I know it's not me late again. It's been a minute though. I've been on time, y'all, but <sighs> I'm not going to get into all of the details of this week in depth, but just let me tell you that this week has been a lot in many different ways. There has been a lot of tough stuff this week, a lot of busyness for many different reasons to celebrate to get stuff done, um, which with that means like work. And it's just, you know, uh, with the creative team and all that, I, this is my first year serving in this role during the Christmas season, which is super busy, super busy, obviously, because it's like totally when we celebrate Jesus birthday. So, you know, There's a lot going on with that, and so it has been a time to be alive this year, right? And so with that, you know, this episode is late, but we're here, guys. We're here, and um, what do I want to talk about? There's so many things that I want to talk about that I'm not going to talk about because it's too soon to talk about it, but, you know. I will talk about, however, this is my favorite time of year in general. I love, 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 love all of the people who have all of the money to spend on their electricity bill to put Christmas lights up outside. I love driving anywhere at night and people have, you know, all the decorations and lights and whatever, especially if it's I'm not expecting it because I used to kind of, I mean, I kind of know what neighborhoods probably will, but I feel like I used to have a better handle on that. And now, like, there used to be neighborhoods that I knew that, like, house after house after house, you could go and there'd be so much stuff. And it really makes my heart happy. Like, I don't know what it is. But when I'm driving and just see Christmas lights up and Christmas decorations lit up in people's yard, it just it just does something to my soul. It just makes me so happy. And um, so this is my favorite time of year. And also what I'm learning just in general is just how much um, and you can, you know, do what you want with this, but just how much the Lord will use you. Like after he pulls you through something, I'm seeing how much he will use you to pull other people through similar things. It's not going to be exactly the same as what you went through because everybody's circumstances and like little unique things are going to be different, but like the underlying principle is going to be the same. And I'm just seeing how much and just really how important it is to 
one, never be ashamed of like what you've gone through. Um, I am very much that way. I'm transparent on here and even more so with people in person, just because some stuff you don't want just out there. I try to give as much context to everything I say out there, say on here. However, I know people can edit clips down and do whatever they want and stuff like that. So I try not to put stuff out there. I try to be very thoughtful about what I put on here. That's why there's some stuff I don't talk about on here. Anything I put on here is I don't care who hears it and what they do with it because it just is what it is. But in outside of here, I'm very much like not at all ashamed of everything, anything. I mean, well, I guess everything, but whatever. I've never, I'm not ashamed of anything I've been through. And I think that is so important. And it's funny because it's really in the church that I see it more where, you know, you've been living for the Lord for a long time and all of that. And then when aspects of your past come up, some people, it it could trigger shame and stuff like that. And I think it's super important to remember that in those moments, one, it's important to share that stuff because you just don't know what people are going through and how it can be a help and a source of encouragement, inspiration, whatever, to the next person. But also, too, I feel like what I've learned in conversations that I've had with people, because I'm I'm in a place in my life where I'm around a lot of people that their backgrounds and their life or whatever is a lot different than a lot of the stuff that I've been through. And so as we've had different conversations and like, Parts of my past have come up kind of like the more extreme things because we all have stuff. It's just some people go through more extreme things or do more extreme things than others. So then it's like when those aspects of my life comes up, one of the things that has been said is I remember talking to somebody that and or whatever. I remember talking to someone and them saying like, wow, I didn't realize how much of your life had been redeemed. And see, that's the thing where it's important to like not have shame and not feel like you can't be transparent about whatever your struggles are, especially like when you, because I've been at this point living for the Lord for 16 years. And so 16 years into this, there are things that I just, they're not a struggle at all. They're not like whatever, right? But when people hear about different things, but then they see how I am now. And so this is my encouragement to whoever. It's like when people hear things about your past that are more extreme than the way you're living now to the point where they can't even fathom that you would be that way because of how much the Lord has changed your life. I think it's important to share that because it just gives God like even that much more glory. Like, wow, I'm, I always tell people all the time, if like who I am now is literally only by the grace of God. And I feel like if God can transform my life, cause let's even take out the extreme things that I've gone through or done or whatever, we can take that out. We could even just focus on insecurities, fears, mindsets, whatever, even if we just focus on the internal changes that the Lord made, that maybe everybody is not going to know that was a thing that in and of itself, I'm always like, if he could do it for me, he could do it for anybody because I'm not, you know, special. And so that's one of the things that has really just come up a lot this week via either things that are going on or just conversations that I've had with people. Um, I'm also seeing how much, and I've kind of said this before, but just how much God equips us to do the things that he needs us to do. And he equips us before he has us step into it. And what's so cool is that I'm learning that the equipping stage isn't necessarily going to be where you get those skills doing exactly what he's going to 
lead you into. And I don't know why what comes to mind is the Karate Kid movie. And I think about when Mr. Miyagi was training Daniel, he was wax on, wax off, having him wash a car, right? And had him do all these random different things that in Daniel's mind didn't seem like it was actually training, but it was giving him the skills that he needed to have when he was going to be actually fighting. And it's so funny because one of the things I do, um, especially with the some of the subcontracting work that I do, is I create resumes for people. It's one of the things that every one of my subcontracting client gets is a resume. And it's funny because some people, because they're teenagers, will not have had a job yet. And so that'll be the first thing they said, like, well, I've never had a job. And I'm like, okay, well, have you ever babysat your siblings or cousins or whatever? Yeah. Okay. Did you get paid to do it or was it volunteer? Because volunteer experience is the same. Oh, you got paid. Okay. That's technically self employment. Have you ever you know, went around to go shovel driveways or do the yard or, you know, just different things that even stuff you do around the house. And I will, I've created it into a job description with the tasks that you're doing within that, because at the end of the day, you're still getting skills that could be helpful to you in a traditional place of employment. And so that's ingrained in me in general, because these are the conversations I have with the kids that I work with. But I've actually been thinking about that lately, um, just with my life. Like if you would have ever asked me in any universe, (laughs) anywhere in the world, if I would have thought that I would ever be in full-time ministry, because that's basically what it is with the stuff that I do with the creative team. Plus I lead a small group and all this stuff. And so if you would have ever asked me if I would have ever in my life thought I would be doing that. Now, when I say that, like, granted, and never mind, that's irrelevant. So (laughs) if you would have asked me if I would have ever thought that, no, right, ever in any, any ever, that was never. Now, if you would have asked me if I would have been a therapist or something like that, absolutely because man i wish i had the studio cuz i could have did shout out to baylor but anyways um yeah if you would have ever asked me that the answer would have been no but here's the thing that i'm realizing is my over a decade of working in the social work field especially given what i do in my role cuz it's not like i'm preaching i'm not you know in the pulpit or it's not that type of full time ministry but there are a lot of things that go into needing to help get things done, especially because at my church, we do a lot with online stuff and different content and all that stuff. And you got to have like systems in place and structure. So like I do project management and making sure like things get done and this, that, and the other. And there's, and there's so much that goes into that because the way I look at it is, it's so funny. I've done so many things and in the past month or so have stepped up in so many ways just to help move a project forward where someone else couldn't or just whatever. Um, whereas like last week I talked about I was going to host an episode. It didn't, it didn't end up happening. And what's funny is, huh, I mean, I said I would do it when I was asked to do it, but if I'm honest, I really didn't want to do it. But the only reason I didn't want to do it is just there was a lot of fear just because it's different. Like I host my show every week, have for over four years. I've had guests. I'm intentional. I know I can interview just I like I knew I could do it, but it's just different when you're doing it for somebody else's thing. I Like even when people would ask me to be a guest, depending on what they were having me do, there would be a little bit of anxiety that would go into that. Um, And it didn't end up happening because the original person that was supposed to do it, like I thought, it doesn't matter, but (laughs) it didn't happen, right? 
But what I see the Lord, how he used that is that I have this policy right now where if the only reason that I don't want to do something is because I'm scared to do it, like I can't let fear be the reason that I don't do something. And so it's interesting because that's always kind of been my policy, but I've had to really like operate in that more. And so if people, because people always have this perception about you and your life, a lot of people have given or had the perception of me as being fearless. Literally, that could be the furthest thing from the truth. Like I have so much fear and so much anxiety doing things that are like normal. Like I was responding to an email on behalf of like our church and there's this thing that we're doing or whatever. And there's like the, um, I think he's called the co-lead pastor and the executive pastor and this email thread. And then the people that were emailing to, and I'm the one as the project manager that's responding. And it took me forever (laughs) to draft this email, just thinking of I'm emailing on behalf of someone else. Now, here's the thing. I send professional emails all the time, either for my subcontracting work, my company. I have done this for years. But for whatever reason, when I'm doing stuff on behalf of someone else that it's not until I get comfortable, because this is all a little bit kind of new because I'm newly in this role or whatever. But um, there's just so much fear and anxiety and it takes me forever to like do stuff. And it's just so funny. But my policy is very much that I cannot allow fear. Like if the only reason, like if I'm, and I'm pretty self-aware, so I know what skills I have and what skills I don't have, especially professionally, because I've pretty much done a lot of the same things professionally in my career. And so if I know skill wise, I could do it. So let's go back to hosting the podcast. I knew that based on my having my own podcast for four years, I know that I had the skill and ability to do it. And so if the only reason I am going to say no to something is because I'm scared, for me, that's not a valid reason. As someone who is big on growth and development, like those are things I'm very passionate about, like not staying stagnant, not whatever. And I think it's really, really cool because I've, when I look at my life, I've got to like, I like I remember being in college because I I didn't start college until I was 29 going on 30. And then I graduated with my bachelor's at right before I turned 35. And um, it's really interesting because I remember being in college and getting an opportunity to get a job already in the social work field. And not realizing that that's not everyone else's like journey. Cause I remember talking to this girl that we were in one of the human services classes I had to take when I was, um, in my undergrad stuff. And well, I guess it's all undergrad. So like the, the school that I was at before I transferred to the school to finish my bachelor's, it was a June, I guess it'd be like a junior college. It's so funny how, <laughs> And I'm I'm learning this a lot and more, especially in the creative world. Like when you get into videography and whatever, I'm having to learn so many terms that I don't know what the actual like word means. I know in theory what what it like what conceptually what something is, but then they'll use the language that's associated with it. And I won't know what they're talking about. And then they'll explain it or whatever. So I'm learning a lot. But um, so I say all that to say, I guess it would have been like a junior college or whatever. It was a community college, but you could only get your associate's degree there. And so when I was there, the whole point, I remember talking to this girl And when she told me that she worked at Walgreens, I don't know if Walgreens is nationwide, but if it's not, it's kind of like a, like a CVS or those are the only, and if those are not nationwide, then I don't know what to tell you. It's Google it. Right. So then she worked and I was just like, remember being shocked that she worked there. And then that's when I realized like, oh, 
just the favor that I have because I've, but it's really, I have really, once I surrender my life to the Lord, there are a few areas of my life, because I'm we're not going to pretend like I'm perfect out here because I'm, I'm not at all. But there are a few areas of my life that I really try to be in tune with where he's leading me and what he has me doing. So literally, the only reason I'm doing project management for the creative team is not because it was something I ever aspired to do because I didn't even know that was a thing. It's literally because the Lord said, I want you to do this. I thought I was hearing wrong. And then about a month later, the opportunity was presented to me. And so then I was like, oh, I guess I didn't hear wrong. But when it comes to where I work, when it comes to where I live, when it comes to where I go to church, and I would even say when it comes to being in a relationship, now I'm not in one, but a lot of that is nothing ha- I haven't had the peace to really be in anything that I was ever in that's why I had situationships and not none of them were like an actual relationship but in those areas I really believe that if God has a plan and a purpose for my life those areas are included in it and so I really try to be like led by him and so then with that a part of that was like where I went to college and stuff like that. Like I got my bachelor's degree from Bible from a Bible college, excuse me, not because I wanted to go to Bible college for the sake of going. God was literally like, I want you to go here and then here. And then I remember, and I want you to do this program. And I remember people tried to talk me out of it because they struggled. And I just knew that if he told me to do it, it would work itself out. And that's, really continued to prove true. Sometimes not the way that I think or whatever, but in the end, it always works together for my good. You know what I mean? And so with that, I get have gotten to like live a life where I just get to do a lot of dope things. And especially like right now, like, well, I would have never envisioned this for my life. Like, we did a video shoot the other day and it's, you know, it's really making me want to step my game up when I get back to visuals for my podcast. Cause there's like an actual camera and different type of mic. And I mean, there's still the roadcaster, but uh, just different things and like the behind the scenes and just everything that goes into it. And then getting to see the final product, like it's been just super dope. And I'm just like, wow, We did so much that day, like so many different content, so much, excuse me, different content. I even recorded a liner. I didn't know what that was before, but, and I don't even know if I can fully articulate what it is, but what I know that it is, it's basically, there will be messages that we're trying to get out to people and somebody will record a video clip about it. So mine was about inviting everybody to church um, on Christmas Eve. We're going to have <laughs> four encounters, which services for those of y'all that don't use that language at 9, 11, 1, and 3. Um, I guess this will be my invitation to whoever lives in Omaha if you want to come. It's Love Church. It's at 20120 Blue Sage Parkway. The only reason I know that is because I had to say that in the liner. And here's the thing. I am on video all the time, not as much right now in the past couple months, but for sure, I mean, I've had visuals for my podcast forever. I've done all types of videos for my company, et cetera. When I tell you probably the most stressful thing that I did that day during our content day was recording my liner. I tried to get out of it. I was nervous. I was like kind of fumbling through trying to like, remember what I needed to say, but then also not say it too fast, which I was saying it fast because I wanted it to hurry up and be over. All of this in front of people. That's the other thing. When I record my podcast, I'm by myself. Nobody else is there. There was the cameraman, the director, and then just people (laughs) that were just in there that, thank God they were in there because they were kind of like helping because they knew I was like nervous and just all these things. But stuff like that, like there's so much that I get to do, um, even being a part of the choir, I would have got to be a part of the choir regardless because it was 
an open invitation to everyone that wanted to audition. But even still, like on Christmas Eve, this is why you should come. If you listen to this and you don't have anywhere that you're going to be on Christmas Eve and you live in Omaha, you should definitely come see me in the choir in the 9, 11, 1, 3. Obviously, you know, you're coming for Jesus. But at the same time, if you want to see me in the choir, you know, that's a good way for you to come. And so um, even stuff like that, like I'll get to be a part of the Christmas Eve encounter, like in a different way. I would have served regardless, probably on a broadcast cam, because that's what I typically do, either broadcast cam or photography. But it's really cool. What I actually appreciate about being part, being a part of the choir, excuse, excuse me, is as the project manager, I have made it my point to try to understand as much as possible about every area of the creative team, simply because it just helps me to know how I can help if needed, like when we're trying to get projects done or just have a greater understanding of it. Because it's important for me to understand things that I am supposed to be responsible for. And so with that, being a part of the choir, first of all, has given me such a respect. I love our worship team already, but I just have such a respect for everything that goes into like the preparation, the behind the scenes, you know, because I didn't know, you know, and so there's that. And so it's just really given me just such a a greater understanding of all that, um, which I feel like ultimately will just continue to help me in my role as, you know, things are going to continue to grow and develop and even look a little different in this next year. And I'm excited about that. But um, yeah, like this, <laughs> just, I say all that to say this past week, because a lot has happened this week and there's, <sighs> there's so much more I want to talk about, but um, it's so funny because if you notice, I keep my episodes a half an hour or less, and a lot of that has to do with where I'm recording it because I'm actually recording it in, I guess it's Spotify podcast, like on their web browser. So I'm not recording in StreamYard right now since I'm not doing visuals. Actually, I stopped paying for it because there's really no point if I'm not going to have visuals. Why waste my money? I'll get it back when I get back to it. And they have a 30 minute cap in the web browser. I don't want to record it on my phone because what? You know what I mean? And so it's really interesting that that's the reason mainly that my episodes are. It'll be sometimes a little over once I add the intro and outro tracks or whatever in editing. But as far as recording, episodes are not going to be more than 30 minutes uh, right now. But here's the thing. This week, (laughs) it has been a week like and there's man. There will come. Yeah, so much has happened this week. Um, There's just it's like I often find myself saying like (laughs) what is happening because there's so much that there's so much that I appreciate that's happening in my life right now that like I don't understand it but it just feels like it's what's supposed to be happening and I see the blessing in it and so I'm extremely grateful but yeah there's been a lot that's especially this week there's just been a lot so I'm going to go ahead and get out of here though cuz it's about that time so make sure that you are taking care of yourself mentally make sure you're taking care of yourself emotionally emotionally excuse me Make sure you're taking care of yourself spiritually and physically. Um, Yeah, I've been back on the Snatch 40s journey, um, back at it consistently with CrossFit, and it has been a time to be alive. It has been very humbling because I'm there's much more focus on my form where I'm at now, and I'm not saying they didn't focus on it before, but it's just really interesting that where I'm at now, like, I think because they know I've done some before, what modification looks like now sometimes is non-existent, but it's just different. So I'm going to go, though. 
Uh, make sure that at the end of all that, you are being healthy in your relationships. Thank you so much for tuning in. I love you so much, and I will talk to y'all soon. Bye. Ladies and gents, this concludes transmission. Tune in next time for a whole new edition, another adventure and mission to share, be heard, and clarify the vision of this whole new world for... Damn.